coming up, Elliot Ridgeway uh, is our next presenter. He's doing uh, a presentation on an introduction to Game Maker Studio 2, um, which is a uh, another game engine. We're kind of on a game engine uh, uh, presentation streak right now. Um, so uh, Elliot Ridgeway, let me pull up his bio here. He is a hobbyist game developer. He's been one for over 20 years. Uh, and his experience ranges from 2D story-driven games, uh, kind of like what we were talking about, actually, to more like 3D experiences. Um, and his works include both ManCon and The Idiot's Tale, which are available on Steam if you're, you're uh, interested in trying them out. Um, and, and just a quick bio, or uh, quick, a, a quick uh, synopsis of his presentation. He's uh, going to do an introductory session on the Game Maker Studio 2 engine. Um, and he'll discuss kind of pros and cons on how to use it and uh, get into, into what the engine actually is. So without further ado, please let me welcome Elliot Ridgway with his presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Elliot Ridgway. Um, I am an independent game developer based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And today I'm going to be giving a talk on Game Maker Studio 2, um, why you might want to consider using it for your project, some of its pros and cons. Um, I'll be doing a couple of quick demos that show uh, some of the features that Game Maker Studio has, and then um, I'll try to leave uh, around 15 minutes or so at the end for questions. So um, if you've been around the uh, indie development community for a while, you've probably heard of, of Unity and, and Unreal as sort of the, the two big uh, game engines that everybody's using. Um, Game Maker Studio 2 is is not as popular, which I think is really unfortunate because I, I think that it it holds its own really well against uh, some of these more more well known tools. Um, so about four years ago, um, I, I started working on my uh, my 2D RPG project called Moncon, which uh, I'll I'll talk a little bit more about at the end. Um, and I was trying to decide on on what uh, tool that I wanted to develop it in, um, and I'd kind of worked my way down to, I'm either going to do it in Unity or in Game Maker Studio 2. And I'm just going to sort of put the two tools side by side and see which one I have a better experience with. Um, and uh, Ben and Alex kind of alluded to this earlier in the uh, the introduction a couple minutes ago. Uh, Unity is, is has, has a pretty steep learning curve to it. Um, and when I switched over to using Game Maker, I, I found the experience was just night and day. Uh, Game Maker Studio is just a uh, much easier tool to to get your feet wet with and, and just start running running with. So yeah, um, I think that's kind of the big selling point in my opinion for Game Maker is that it's really quick to prototype games. If you if you have an idea for for a game, um, Game Maker it's it just everything is kind of tailored to you just getting up and running really quickly. You don't have to fight with the interface. You don't have to set up a lot of things. You can just start writing code and, and you know you're off to the races. Um, the Ben and Alex mentioned this a little bit earlier. Uh, Game Maker is really easy for beginners to pick up, um, so you don't necessarily have to have any any programming background to start using Game Maker. Uh, and the like I said, the interface is really easy to use. Uh, everything's kind of tailored to you getting started really quickly. But also, it uh, scales really well for more uh, complicated, sophisticated sorts of games that you might want to make in it. Um, it it kind of spans the whole spectrum, really. If you want to just do a, a simple game. Uh, Game Maker is great for that, um, but also if you're if you have in mind, you know this big epic um, experience that is going to have a lot of moving parts. You know it, it scales all the way up to that as well. Uh, game Maker is primarily for PC game development, but it exports to pretty much all the other platforms. Um, you can export to Mac and Linux. Um, all the consoles are supported, so you can you can put your game on on Switch, on on Xbox, on PlayStation. Uh, mobile is supported as well. Um, and, and also uh, web browser games. Um, so it can pretty much, if you can think of it and it's a mainstream platform, Game Maker can probably export to it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to be a coder to use Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, they've got their own uh, drag and drop logic uh, that's kind of similar to Scratch, um, where you're just sort of putting blocks together to, to describe the logic of your game. Um, but if you are a coder, uh, Game Maker's got a really nice uh, language that's, that's pretty similar to C or C++ um, for, for writing your code in. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to nerd out a little bit here about uh, some of the programming features that it does have. Uh, if, you're, if you've got a background in computer science, um, you'll be you know, happy to know that 
it's got all the the major data structures supported. So arrays, lists, maps, queues, uh, they're, they're all pretty much there. Um, object inheritance, uh, which is really nice. So if you design an object in GameMaker that's got certain properties, certain, certain logical behaviors, uh, you can make a child object and it inherits all of those, all of those behaviors from the parent, uh, saves a lot of time. Uh, functions were added recently to GameMaker, which is really nice. Uh, Previously, uh, you sort of just had to write these long bodies of code. And if you had repeated sections, you couldn't really uh, encapsulate it in, in, into like a, a repeated section, like a, a, a function provides you. So uh, functions are there now, which is, is really nice for uh, encapsulating and isolating logic in, in repeatable chunks. Um, and then uh, GameMaker's got some uh, game-friendly loops, which are really nice. So there's a... Um, a keyword in GameMaker uh, called with that is, is kind of unique to GameMaker, and um, we'll 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 probably get into that a little bit later in the in the demo. Um, it's got a lot of animation editors built in, so um, if you're doing pixel sprite art, GameMaker's got a some nice animation tools for for pixel art. Uh, skeletons. Uh, so if you want to do um, bone animation, where you, your your character is is just made up of a lot of uh, sub images like a you know a head and an arm and a leg and, and stuff like that and you want to animate it with a skeleton uh, game maker can do that too um, with a, a third party tool called spine um, recently they added curve animations to game maker which is really nice so if you want objects to move around on the screen with smooth curves uh, it can do that now and uh, yeah it just keeps scaling up in the, in the complexity of, of, of what you can do so particle systems are supported if you want to do like dynamically generated fire or, or uh, rain or snow or something like that. Um, it's got some support for 3D. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but GameMaker uh, is primarily a 2D tool for, for 2D games, but uh, it's got some 3D support. So you can draw 3D surfaces with, with perspective and stuff like that. And um, if you're familiar with uh, shaders, um, which is, is basically just a um, uh, little a uh, graphical flair that you can do with with games that uh, uh, it, it, it's pieces of code that run directly on the graphics card of your computer, so they, they run really really fast. Um, if you're if like I said, if you're familiar with shaders at all, you, you've probably heard of uh, GLSL, which is kind of the the uh, the shader language for for OpenGL. Um, all of that, all of those um, functions uh, that are uh, provided with GLSL are also available in GameMaker. Game Maker's documentation is great. Uh, I can't really stress this enough. A lot of tools out there kind of fall down on the documentation front. Either they don't have enough examples or, or not all of the functionality is documented everywhere that it should be. So uh, Game Maker doesn't fall into that trap, fortunately. They've got lots of examples out there, lots of great documentation. So if you're ever scratching your head on how something works in Game Maker, the, the manual is your best friend. Um, and uh, debugging tools are great too. Uh, if you've if you've been a uh, a programmer for any number of years, uh, you'll probably be familiar with the kind of the the workflow that that goes with a debugger. So, um, pretty much all all the main debugging features that you would expect are there. Um, you can step through your code one line at a time. Um, you can inspect objects as your game is running and see like what what states the variables are in, and you, you can kind of debug your game that way. So a lot of a uh, lot of really nice features all around. And uh, I, I wanted to include this slide just to sort of um, uh, allay any doubts that that uh, GameMaker uh, couldn't be used for uh, uh, major indie game development. These these are some examples of games that were designed uh, in GameMaker um, that are, are, are pretty mainstream uh, indie games. Um, so if you've if you've got you know a dream to to be a uh, a big indie developer. Um, the, these are some um, examples of what's gone before uh, using GameMaker. So there are some downsides to GameMaker. There's there's a few situations where I would say you, you might want to consider using a different tool. Um, the biggest one um, I think is that GameMaker's 3D support is is not great. Um, so if you if you have in mind a full blown 3D experience, um, something like Mario Odyssey or, or something like that, you probably want to um, refer to Unity or Unreal for that, because uh, while GameMaker can do 3D, like I said, it's just kind of 
drawing vertex surfaces one at a time, which is, is um, not practical for a, uh, a more detailed sort of 3D game. So if 3D is your, your thing, you probably want to go with a different tool. Uh, their HTML5 export is not great. Um, and this is something that I don't have firsthand experience with, to be honest. This is something that people online were complaining about with GameMaker. Um, so buyer beware, I guess, if, if your, uh, your target is, is uh, web browser games. Although I will say uh, the company that makes GameMaker was recently bought by Opera, which is a, uh, a, a company that, that makes the, uh, the Opera web browser. Um, so I, I could see GameMaker improving their support for web browser games in the future since they're now owned by Opera and Opera is you know, primarily focused on, on the web. And uh, this is also a, a pretty big drawback. Um, if, you, if your target is, is consoles or something like that, their, their platform licenses are kind of expensive. Um, just the base version of GameMaker is not too bad. I think that it's um, somewhere in the, the $100 to $200 range to, to buy a license for, for GameMaker. But um, if you, if you want to export to other platforms, uh, like say to the Switch, um, the, uh, the cost of, of licensing uh, rises pretty steeply. So um, if, you, if you're a no budget indie developer like me, that, that could potentially be a, uh, a drawback for, for you using GameMaker. OK, so now um, we're going to get into a demo uh, that, that shows off GameMaker and some of the features that it has. Um, so I'm just going to switch over here. So this is what uh, GameMaker looks like when you first open it up. This, this is the, the view that you're, you're going to get pretty comfortable with if you use GameMaker. So um, I'm going to just sort of break down everything that's on the screen here really quickly. So this, this dark green area in the center here is your workspace. Um, this is pretty much like the name implies where, where you're going to be doing all your work. So uh, everything from editing sprites to, to writing scripts to, to um, working with tile sets, all, all of that's going to be done in this, this area of the screen here. Um, down at the bottom uh, is the, uh, the console. So as your game is running, if there's any diagnostic information that, uh, that Game Maker needs to alert you about, uh, any, any errors or warnings or things like that, all of that's going to get printed out down here at, at the bottom. Um, and then over here on the right side is the asset browser. So uh, all of the assets that make up your game, uh, all of your sprites, all your objects, uh, animations, scripts, pretty much all that stuff goes in here. And all these folders are, are provided for you with a new Game Maker project, so you don't have to create these yourself. Although recently, um, GameMaker lifted the restriction that uh, each type of asset has to go in the associated folder. So um, if you don't like this organization, you can you can rearrange stuff uh, however you see fit. Um, so I'm going to give a, a quick preview of, of what this uh, demo is going to be about, just to sort of give you all the, the roadmap for, for where we're headed here. Um, I have two, um, two parts to this demo, uh, two, sort of two different uh, uh, game concepts, if you will. Um, and I, I figured that this would be a better way to show sort of what Game Maker can do rather than um, just starting from a completely blank project and uh, writing everything, you know, one, one line of code at a time. I think this will be a, a, a more instructive preview of, of what Game Maker can do. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to run my project here and just to show you guys what we're going to do. Uh, so, to, to run a, a, a game in Game Maker, um, the, uh, the play button up here uh, is, is what you click on. So I'll get this running. And so this is going to be the first part of our demo. This is like your classic uh, arcade space shooter kind of game. Um, I've already written a little bit of code to get this up and running. So um, my guy is the, uh, the blue ship on the left. And uh, we have these bad guy ships on the, on the right side of the screen. So if I, if I push on the uh, arrow keys on my keyboard, I can, can move my ship around. Um, and then pushing the space bar on the keyboard will we'll shoot these little projectiles. And if one of these projectiles collides with one of the bad ships, then it, uh, it disappears. So um, pretty rudimentary, um, not, not much uh, exciting going on here yet, but we're going to uh, add some, some features to this and make it a little bit more interesting. And then uh, the other demo, uh, or the other part of this demo, is is a uh, like a Mario clone kind of game. So um, I've got this uh, this character uh, coded up to to walk around on the screen. Uh, he can jump, 
and stuff like that. And he, he collides with these white squares. Um, so this part of the demo is, is going to be focused on, on talking about uh, tiles and, and tile sets. So we're, we're pretty much going to be um, designing the background that, that goes uh, behind this character in this part of the demo. So uh, circling back to the, um, the first part of the demo, the space shooter, let's, uh, let's open that up. Um, so that, uh, that screen that we were looking at earlier is this, um, this asset here where, where my mouse is um, called Demo Room 1. Um, everything in Game Maker is broken up into rooms. So you can think of rooms as, as like the screens of your game or, or the levels of your game, if you prefer. So uh, the, the word that uh, Game Maker uses for that is, is rooms. Um, so here's the, uh, the room for our space shooter game that we were looking at earlier. And I I'm going to uh, get rid of this uh, tile grid because we don't need it. You can click on this toggle grid button up here to, to turn that off and make it a little bit easier to look at. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about layers next. So every room in Game Maker is comprised of one or more layers. And layers are a really nice way, uh, first of all, to organize the content in your room um, and just sort of keep straight what's what. Um, but also, layers do impact the, the depth that things are drawn at. So things that are at the bottom of your, of your layer stack are going to be drawn first. And um, then the next layer up will get drawn and, and so on and so forth. But they're, they're also a great organ is, <coughs> excuse me, an organizational tool. Um, so the layers are, are over here on the left side of the screen when you've got a room open. So you can see that our, our bottom layer is, is called background. And all of that's doing is, is drawing this, um, this space background that I found on Google. Um, and so to sort of demonstrate that, I can turn the layer on and off to, to show you that that's, that's all that's on that layer. Um, and then the next one up is this layer that I've called good guy. And the only thing on this layer is our, our blue ship that, that, the, uh, that the player controls. Um, also, by the way, uh, when, you're, when you're clicking around on these layers, you can see what's on them in this section down here, uh, the section called layer properties. Um, so if I click on background, we can see that the, uh, the background image is, is what this layer is focused on. If I click on this, the this uh, object that's called O Hero Ship is, is what's on this layer. And then if I come up to bad guys, uh, O Bad Ship, th three of these are, are on this layer. This top layer um, effects, there's nothing on it yet. Um, but that's that's kind of what this uh, demo is going to be focused on, is, is we're going to add some, some effects to this game to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, one other thing to note here before we move on, you might notice that these um, objects that are in our room are prefixed with a lowercase o. Um, so we've got O hero ship here, and then uh, on the bad guys layer, we've got these O bad ship objects. That's uh, kind of a game maker uh, convention for, for organizing the assets in your game. So you don't necessarily have to follow this if you don't want, but it, it just kind of uh, helps to keep things organized. So everything that is an object is prefixed with a lowercase o. Um, and then if you have similar assets in your game that uh, are, uh, for example, sprites, that, that may appear similar, you can prefix those with a lowercase s to indicate that they're sprites as opposed to objects. So it's just a, a, a simple way to kind of keep things organized as you're working on your game. Um, so what we're going to do here uh, is, uh, let, let me actually just run the game again to kind of illustrate what we're going to do. So if I hit the space bar here um, and a projectile flies out of my ship and collides with one of the bad ships, um, the ship just kind of blips out of existence, uh, which is doesn't look great. Um, so you know we might want to add something like an explosion uh, when the projectile collides with the bad ship. So let's let's uh, let's add an explosion here to make this look a little bit more interesting. Um, so everything in Game Maker starts with sprites. So before you before you do anything with layers, before you add any logic to your objects, you, you have to start with sprites. So I'm going to uh, go back over to my workspace. And I'm going to come over here to the Asset Browser and expand my Sprites folder. And you can see that I've already created um, a couple of subfolders inside of Sprites, uh, one called Demo1 and one called Demo2 for the uh, two parts of our demo here. And in here, inside of the Demo1 folder, we can see that there is an S bad ship sprite, an S hero ship sprite, and, and so on. Um, the, the lowercase s is, is um, 
S is for sprite, like I was saying earlier. Um, this this kind of helps us distinguish between what's a sprite and what's an object. Um, yeah, so if I uh, double click on one of these, we can open up the sprite and, and look at it. So this is what a sprite editor looks like in GameMaker. Um, so on this screen, you can control uh, where the center of the object is. It's, it's kind of hard to see here, but this little crosshair thing here um, tells GameMaker where the center of the object is. Um, and then if I click on edit image, we can go into like a paint editor and, and uh, actually draw on the image and, and change it and stuff like that. Um, so let's let's add our explosion sprite first. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to right click on my demo one folder and bring up this context menu, um, which has, has a bunch of options for, for the asset browser. And we're going to create a new sprite. So if I come to create, and then in the sub menu here, I'm going to go down to sprite. Um, yeah, so this is what a new sprite looks like. Uh, by default, GameMaker is going to try to give it a like just sort of a temporary name. So it's called Sprite 8 right now, but we're going to rename it to S Explosion. All right, so now all we have to do is make the explosion animation. So um, we could draw this by hand, um, but um, you know, you might, uh, for example, get the explosion animation off the internet. You might be working with an artist who's working in a tool other than GameMaker to make your, your art. Um, so what's more common than you, and I'm not not trying to downplay the the built-in um, sprite editor that that uh, GameMaker provides. It's perfectly fine, but um, what what I found to be more common is that you're you'll be designing your art in another tool like Photoshop or something like that, and then you're going to be importing it into GameMaker. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So um, to import sprites, you click on this import button here, and one of the nice little shortcuts that GameMaker provides you is um, if you have a strip image, so an image where the animation is all stored in the same image, but as a, a strip of images. So uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger to demonstrate this. So I have this explosion strip image, which you can see has the six frames of animation that, that's going to make up our explosion effect. Um, if you have an image that is suffixed with this underscore strip and then the number of, of frames of animation, GameMaker is smart enough to automatically uh, subdivide this image up into the, the um, sub images necessary to make the animation happen. Um, so if I click on this and then go to open, and then GameMaker is just going to give me a little warning to, to say that you know if you import an image, you can't go back. Um, but that, that's fine. It doesn't matter here. So we can see that our explosion image has been imported. And it is automatically divided up into the six frames necessary, which we can see at the bottom here. So if we want to see this animation play, we can click this play button here. And uh, this is going a little bit fast, in my opinion. So let, let's slow this down. Um, so in the top left corner of the screen here, uh, we have this FPS, or frames per second, uh, field that we can edit. So right now, it's, it's running at a, a rate of 30 frames per second. So let's just slow this down to, to 15. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And then um, the uh, the crosshairs that I, I was talking about earlier um, are, are by default up in the, the top left part of the image. So it's generally good practice to try to put this towards the center of your image. Um, that, that It's useful for um, uh, things like image rotation and, and scaling and stuff like that. Uh, you, you just kind of want to think about where where is the center of your object in, in 2D space. Um, so I'm going to move this down here to the middle to say that tell GameMaker that the uh, the center of this sprite is is you know about the middle of this animation here. So that, that looks pretty good. Um, but uh, what we need to do next is we can't put this sprite directly into our room. Um, th that's just kind of how GameMaker is set up. You can't automatically put a sprite in a room. Um, so what we're going to have to do next is make an object for this um, explosion sprite. And the object is going to allow us to apply logic to the uh, to the sprite. So let's close this. Um, and then I'm going to collapse some of these folders here. Uh, so we're going to come to Object, right click on it, and then go to Create. And then we're going to go to Object. So um, again, GameMaker just gives us a, a reasonable default for our, uh, for our object, call, calling it Object 6. So I'm going to call it lowercase o, capital E, explosion instead. 
Um, and you can see that the editor for an object looks a little bit different than the editor for a sprite. Um, the, the, the window is, is kind of broken up into these two parts. So we have this part on the left that um, is sort of like a top level description of, of what our object is. So it, there's a sprite that's associated with the object, um, some information about the collision mask, uh, whether or not the object is visible and stuff like that. And then we have this um, events box that's kind of hanging off of the object here with this little green line. Um, events are, are the categories um, by which you group your logic for your objects. So everything in GameMaker uh, is driven off of events. And an event is, is, is just what it sounds like. It's something that happens in your game at a certain point in time. Um, so for example, if I click on add event here, we can see all the different event types that you can associate with your object. So uh, create is the first one. Create just says that Hey, when, when my object gets created, if I have a create event, then that does something when the object gets created. Um, when the object gets destroyed, you might want to have a destroy event that does some kind of logic when the object gets removed from the game. Step is really common. Um, if, you, if you decide to pick up GameMaker, uh, pretty much everything that you do in GameMaker is going to have a step event. Um, and the step event is just sort of describing that you want something to happen on every uh, update loop um, iteration of the game. So anytime that the, the state of the game is updated, if you have a step event associated with an object, uh, it's, it's going to get executed on that uh, next update of the game. Um, so let's, so first of all, before we get into actually writing the event for our explosion, let's pull the sprite in. So uh, we can do that by clicking on this, um, this little area here that says no sprite. And uh, if I click on that, it brings up this flyout dialog here that uh, allows us to browse to the sprites of our game. And we put it in the demo one folder. Yeah, so here's our S explosion sprite. So if I just click on this, now our, uh, our O explosion object is associated with the S explosion sprite. Um, so we actually have enough here that we can put it in our game. Now, like I said, um, you can't put sprites into rooms, but you can put objects into rooms. So just to sort of demonstrate what this looks like, I'm going to drag an O explosion object off of the asset browser here on the right side and put it in the center of our, the screen here. So, uh, and now if I click play, yeah, so we can see our explosion object is, um, is there and it's animating uh, the way we'd expect. So. Um, this isn't quite what we want yet. We want the explosion to appear when one of our uh, ship's projectiles collides with one of the bad guy ships. And then uh, we don't want this animation to just loop endlessly. We want it to appear once and then and disappear from the game. So uh, let's get rid of this for now. And um, let's, uh, let's get into the logic for the object so that we can implement what I just described. So the first thing that we want to do is have this object remove itself from the game when the animation finishes playing. So GameMaker provides an event that you can use um, at the end of an animation. Uh, so if I click on Add Event, and then I come down to Other, and then here about the middle of the menu, there is an Animation End event that we can use. So like I said, this will happen when the animation finishes playing. So that, uh, that step um, of... of um, knowing when to execute this event is handled for us by GameMaker. All we have to do is tell GameMaker what should happen when the animation finishes playing. So um, we are, we're going to write some code here now. And um, I apologize if, if you don't have a, um, a background in, in uh, programming. But um, I'm going to try to keep things simple and um, explain what's happening as I go. Um, so to, to remove an object from GameMaker, you use a built-in function called instance destroy. So we're going to type instance underscore destroy here. And then instance underscore destroy takes one argument. And um, again, uh, if you don't have a background in programming, an argument is just a, a property that gets passed to a function in, in, um, in, in your language. So it's, it's the uh, information that goes between these, uh, these braces here that is just telling GameMaker, hey, I want you to destroy something, but, but what, what is going to get destroyed here? Um, and so for an object to refer to itself, in this case, because we want the explosion object to destroy itself when the animation finishes playing, um, GameMaker has a, a, uh, 
a way to reference have objects reference themselves, and that's done with this self dot id um, uh, property that objects have. So self dot id is just a way for the object to point to itself. So just to kind of review here, uh, when the animation end event happens, this uh, section of code is going to get executed. It's going to run this instance destroy function. And the instance destroy function takes the self.id pointer to the object self as its argument. So um, we can put this back in our game here and uh, see what happens now. So let's uh, put the O explosion object here. And what we'd expect to happen is for the animation to just play once. And then the object is just going to disappear from the game. So let's let's see what happens. Yeah, so that's great. What we expected to happen happened. So the object just destroyed itself after the animation finished playing. So um, this is still not quite what we want. We want the explosion to uh, appear by the bad guy ship when a projectile appears with it. So let's let's work on that next. So. Uh, we don't need to do anything else with this O explosion object, so we can close this. Um, and then just to keep organized, let's put this in the Sorry, I think I lost audio there. Can, can, can you all hear me? OK, all right, thanks. <clears throat> um, right, so let's, uh, let's have the explosion appear next to the bad guy ship when, it, uh, when a projectile collides with it. So we're going to update the logic for this uh, oh bad ship object that, uh, that I created ahead of time. So let's open this up. And we can see that I've already created two events for this uh, ship here. We have a create event. So when the object gets created, GameMaker is going to do some logic. And then we have the step event which, like I said, uh, this event will get executed on every single uh, update of the game anytime that the game loop moves forward by a step. So let's let's open this up. And um, this is a little bit more complicated than the previous example that we were looking at. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll try to explain what's going on here. So this first line is a if statement conditional, which just says, if something is true, then move to the, the block that's inside of these uh, curly braces here. Um, this uh, place meeting part here is another built-in uh, game maker function. So place meeting is just saying if something is um, colliding with this object. So uh, what this is achieving is when the uh, projectiles coming from the hero ship collide with the bad guy ships, um, that's uh, when this uh, if statement would resolve to true. And then um, within here, we have our instance destroy uh, function, which again is referring to self.id. But in this case, we're looking at the bad guy ship instead of the explosion object. So in this case, self.id refers to the current uh, bad guy ship that we're looking at. So what we want to have happen is when a projectile collides with the bad guy ship, we're going to create a new explosion object and have it uh, appear at the uh, coordinates of the bad guy ship. So to do that, we're going to write a new function, or, or rather refer to a write a new line of code that refers to a game maker function. And it's got a similar name. Uh, it's called instance underscore create underscore layer. Um, and if you you, you might have seen this uh, pop-up menu, which which is kind of nice. Game maker will try to give you hints if you start typing a function. Um, and, and you know, let you know what, what's already available so that you don't have to know every single function name off the top of your head. You can just kind of pick from this list. Um, so I mentioned the argument list earlier um, for instance destroy. Um, in that case, it takes one argument. Uh, instance create layer takes four arguments. And if you're in doubt about what a, a function can take in GameMaker, uh, they give you this nice little hint at the bottom of your code editor here. So you can see that we have this instance create layer text that's um, highlighted in white. And then this uh, dithered gray text to the right that uh, tells you what the arguments that are expected for this function. So you can kind of glance down here and um, check yourself to make sure that you're, you're providing the correct arguments. So instance create layer takes four arguments. The first one is the x coordinate of the new instance that we're going to be creating. Um, the second one is the y coordinate. 
of the instance that we're going to be creating. Um, the third one is the layer that we want to put the, the new instance on. And then the fourth one is the object that we're going to be creating. So in this case, um, for the xy coordinates, um, we just want to provide the xy coordinates of the, the bad guy ship. So um, because we're in inside of the logic for a single bad guy ship, we have these built-in uh, x, y variables that you can see um, that are highlighted in green here on the first line of code. Um, so we can use that to, to tell the game where to put the explosion object. So I'm just going to type x, comma, y, comma. Um, the next layer, that, or, or the next argument is the layer that we want to put this on. And so we're going to use that effects layer that I was talking about earlier. So this will get drawn um, on top of everything in our room because it's the, the top layer. So I'm going to put effects here, and then we need to give it the object that we want to create. So we want it to create a, an explosion object. So let's uh, let's see if this works. So I'm going to push play here. And now when I shoot a projectile at the ship, little explosion animation appears next to the ship. So I think that looks a lot better than what we had earlier. So um, that, that was kind of a crash course on um, uh, the process of, of bringing in uh, graphical assets into your game and uh, assigning logic to them. Um, so now we're going to move on to the second part of the demo. And this is going to be more focused on um, tiles and uh, tile sets. So um, really quick, uh, I'm going to take a quick detour here to show you uh, how GameMaker determines which room gets displayed first. So in, in the Rooms menu here, on the right side of the screen, um, you can see that there's a little house icon next to demo room one. Um, that that is indicating um, that demo room one is um, the the place where a game maker is going to start. Um, I guess you could think of it as like a, you know, your your home. I guess is why it's a house icon. Um, so we want to focus on this other room for now. We don't we're we're, we're kind of done with the the space shooter demo. So I want demo room two to be the the new home uh, of my game. So um, if I click here to the left side of my uh, room, I, I can get this room manager dialog that um, tells me um, it allows me to reorder uh, what uh, what order the rooms are, are arranged in for Game Maker. So pretty much all I need to do is I just need to move demo room two to the top of this list, and then it becomes my new home. So now um, if I close this, save my project, and then run the game again. Now we're going to uh, start in our second room, which is the, the Mario clone game that, uh, that we saw earlier. So let's, let's open that up. So this is our, um, our, our uh, Mario clone room. We've got three layers here already. So on the, on the left side of the screen, we've got a background layer, which is just drawing this, this blue background behind, uh, behind our character. Uh, we have this collisions layer, which has all of these uh, white square uh, collision objects that are, are allowing our, our character to stand on them. And then finally, we have this characters layer, which has our, our little um, Mario clone guy. Um, so this, this background is not very interesting right now. Um, we just have a solid blue sky and then some, some white squares for the platforms. Um, <clears throat> so for a lot of games, um, Especially if you're you're going for like a retro sort of um, you know NES Super NES look for your game, um, you're going to be working with tiles, and so tiles are, are basically just um, little square parts of images that get repeated on the screen. So um, you know something like a piece of grass, for example, could be a tile. Um, uh, you could draw a piece of dirt for a tile. You could draw clouds for a tile, um, and then you you just want to think about like what are the the single image components that are going to be making up my room. And then once you've made a tile set, um, you can repeat those images over and over to, to draw, draw out your, your levels. Um, so ahead of time, I made this tile set that we're going to be importing into our game. So this is for another project that I, I've been working on. So this is our, um, our tile set that we're going to be importing. And you can kind of see um, the, the components that are going to be making up the, the level. So if you start in the top left here, um, you can see that there's like this little X brick thing. And then to the right of that, there's this grass piece and then another grass piece and then you know, some dirt. And then there's a tree here. So we can uh, import this and, and start um, 
applying it to our level. So to do that, um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a sprite for our tile set. Like I said, everything in Game Maker starts with a sprite. So we're going to come back to our Create menu, and then we're going to come down to Sprite. And then we're going to call it S Tile Set. And then, um, like before with the explosion, we're going to click on this Import button. And then we're going to import our tile set here. So now we have our, our tile set in the game as a sprite. Um, but GameMaker doesn't really know how to um, take this apart and, and put it into repeatable sections for us yet. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually make a proper tile set for this. So let's do that next. So in the tile set menu here, or folder rather, um, in our asset browser, um, I'm going to right click on this, come to create, and then choose tile set from this menu here. Um, and so now we can make um, a tile set for our um, our sprite that we imported. So um, like with objects, you have this, this no sprite section here that's that set to nothing by default. But we can click on it and then browse to our sprite that we imported earlier and, and pull it in and associate it with this tile set. Um, so we can see by default, if you look at the, the white square grid that's overlaid on top of our image, that these the tiles that GameMaker wants to create here are, are, are too fine grained. So like, look at this X brick, for example. We can see that there's there's four white squares going across and then four white squares going down. Um, we don't really need that fine, um, fine grain of, of tiles for this. Uh, so we can adjust the tile width and tile height um, over here on the right side of this window. So let's let's change this to 64 pixels across and then 64 pixels tall. So that, that looks much better. So you can see that the, the white squares now align perfectly with the components of our image that we want to use to build our level. And then um, we, can, we can just leave this as tile set one for now. That's fine. Um, so now we need to make a new layer to put our tiles on. So um, tile layers are kind of special. Um, they're, they're indicated by this uh, little sideways tile grid icon that uh, is called Create New Tile Layer. So if I click on that, um, I now have a new um, tile layer added to my game called tiles underscore one. And now all we need to do is we just need to associate our tile set that we created earlier with this layer. So if I click on no tile set here, I can open up my tile sets folder and then choose tile set one, which I imported earlier. Um, so now th this part is, is kind of fun. This is where you can get kind of creative. So we have all the images over here on the right side that we can use to, to start building our level. Um, so all you got to do is you just have to click on the one you want to use. And then um, your, your mouse has got this uh, tile behind it that uh, kind of indicates where you're going to be drawing. And so now all you got to do is just kind of draw out your level. So and like I said, you can you can be uh, be creative with this. Uh, you know, you don't uh, you can just kind of be as artistic as you want and just kind of kind of feel it out. Um, and then you know we could add some some clouds around here or something like that. So so now if I run the game, um, already this this looks a lot better than than what we had before with the white squares. So this is this is starting to look more like a finished game now. Um, so what I just demonstrated is is one way of working with tiles. So if you start out with a, um, a a tile set image like this one, um, you can you can use the approach that I just described. Um, but you might be asking yourself, well, where, where do I get an image like this? Um, you know, maybe maybe you, you find it um, unintuitive to to design your background in this way, where you're you're having to think about which pieces are repeated and and you know what am I going to be able to reuse and you know what if the edges don't quite line up and you know what, what do I do in situations like that? So, Game Maker's got a really nice um, little hidden shortcut that um, can take an image that is not a tile set and identify which components are repeated and break it down into tiles for you. So I can't really stress enough how how much time this saves, um, especially if you're if you're working with you know an artist uh, who's you know using Photoshop or something, and, and maybe they don't want to create a tile set image like this. Um, maybe uh, what your your artist wants to do is to make an image like this, which all all this is is just a a PNG image that's sitting on my on my computer. 
Um, and you can see that there are repeated components to this that uh, could be identified as tiles, but this is just an image. This is not a, a tile set yet. So um, how would you get this into GameMaker as a tile set that you could work with? So um, this, I, and I like, uh, it, this is kind of frustrating because this is not a very well advertised feature of GameMaker, but it's just extremely, extremely useful. So that's um, why I'm emphasizing it so much here, I guess. Um, the, the, the shortcut is under this room menu here at the top of the screen. And at the very bottom, you have this convert image to tile map. Um, which is, is going to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So let's actually get rid of this tile layer because uh, we're not going to need it. And let's, uh, let's import that image and convert it to a tile map. So if I click on room and then come to convert image to tile map, um, I'm going to import this uh, pre-built background.png as my tile map. And we can see the game maker has pulled it in. And once again, our, our tiles are too fine. Um, we have these uh, smaller white squares that are going across our, our tiles here that are are too um, too too particular. So I mean you could you could do this if if you you know wanted to to break these up into sub images I guess. But for the purposes of this of this demo we could we're, we're going we're going to um, expand this to 64 pixels by 64 pixels again so that our our grid of tiles lines up perfectly with with our image here. And then it's going to create three things when this when we're done with this. So it's going to create a new sprite. So we're just going to call it S new tile set or something like that. It's going to create a new tile map. So we're going to just call this new tile set. And then it's going to add a new layer to our room. So we can just call this tiles underscore two or something like that. And now all we got to do is click this generate map button and just like that, our game now has the um, image that we, we created outside of GameMaker. It's broken everything up into tiles for us. So now everything um, exists uh, on this tile layer like we, were, like we had before. Um, the only difference is we didn't need that, um, that tile map image. So you can see that it's, um, it's broken up our image that we had uh, imported into the game into the component tiles here on the right side. So a lot of that stuff that we weren't using before is gone. Um, so there's there's some memory savings associated with doing it this way. Um, and you're, you're not locked into what was in the image. Now, now you can um, uh, modify what, what the original image consisted of. So like, for example, um, this we've got this weird looking spot on the right side of the screen where the image didn't quite extend all the way to the edge. But we can easily fix that by, by grabbing some new dirt tiles and expanding um, the the uh, scope of our of our tile set here. Um, so yeah, that that's just a really nice way to give yourself a head start if you're working on a level and um, you maybe you want to start drawing it in a paint program or something like that. Um, and then when you come to Game Maker, you can uh, just take that image that you created and import it, and uh, give yourself all of the benefits of having a tile map without all the headache of of trying to draw a bunch of little sub images and make sure that all the edges line up correctly. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the end of the game maker demo. So if you've held on this long, thank you. So just a little bit of uh, personal information about me. Um, if you're interested in um, in learning more about game maker, I, I don't really um, represent game maker or anything like that. But if if you wanted to email me and ask more questions. Uh, this is my email address. Um, I'm also on the Tulsa Game Developers Discord group. And we have a, a Game Maker uh, text chat on there. So if you want to um, message me on Discord, that's fine too. Um, my uh, my game company, Megalithic Mainframe, um, has got a website as well, which is, which is listed here. Um, and uh, we're on Steam and Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. And um, I've got two games that are, are I'm working on right now, both of them being done in, in Game Maker Studio. Um, the uh, the one on the on the top right there is is called Shapeshift Sean. A uh, it's kind of a, a throwback to to the um, the, the 3D uh, pre-rendered side scrollers of, of the Super Nintendo, like Donkey Kong Country. And then the other game project I'm working on is called Moncon. That's the screenshot in the bottom right. So if you're curious about either of those games, they're they're both available in the uh, the, the CSGC arcade on, on the CSGC website.
And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much my talk. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take questions now. All right. Thank you so much for being a part of CSGC 2021. So a few questions that we have. Um, the first one is, what would you say would be the right age group for Game Maker? Like, do you have to have a certain um, knowledge set to get into it? You know, what would be the entry level to get into building with Game Maker? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I think um, just pulling a number off the top of my head, I think, you know, 10 and older would be appropriate for Game Maker. Um, I think if you're younger than 10, I think a, a, a more basic tool like Scratch might be more appropriate. But um, like I mentioned earlier, Game Maker has got a, um, a, a drag and drop logic feature. So if you, if you don't have any programming background, you, you can get started using Game Maker. Um, but um, it might be a little bit overwhelming for younger kids. But I, I think, you know, 10 and older, I, I think, should be able to handle it. And what is the best, um, I guess, platform or output for Game Maker? What would you you said there were some bugs with like three D stuff. So, if if you were developing a game, what type of game would be best suited for building in Game Maker? Um, definitely two D games. Um, so yeah, three D, like like you alluded to, is not very well supported. Um, you can do stuff like. Um, you know, you're drawing like a square and it's got some perspective to it. Um, basically a single vertex of, of, of 3D. Um, and, you know, you, you could imagine somebody could just keep doing that over and over and, and build a 3D game, you know, one vertex at a time, but that's not really the way most people like to work, I think. Um, so definitely not 3D for, for Game Maker. I, I would say like, you know, I, I use a tool like Unity or, or Unreal if you're interested in doing a 3D game. Um, so definitely 2D games, and I think uh, Windows PC is kind of the 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 main um, uh, platform that that Game Maker is optimized for. Um, but that's not to say that you can't put it on on other platforms. Um, all all of the consoles are supported, um, but um, then then you get into licensing territory where you have to buy a separate license in order to put your game on 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 the Nintendo Switch, for example. And our last question is, what resources are out there to um, learn more about Game Maker and get started with it? So um, there's a lot of great YouTube tutorials uh, on on the topic of Game Maker. Um, and, and these tutorials uh, will go into a lot more detail than, than what I was able to do here. So if you want to follow along with somebody who literally starts from scratch and starts building a game, there's a lot of people on YouTube that uh, do that. Um, if, if you need like a, a specific example, um, there's a, a game maker uh, uh, tutorial YouTube channel. The guy's name is Sean Spalding. He makes really great uh, game maker tutorials, and, and he he was really instrumental in uh, me getting started with uh, with game maker. All right, thank you again so much for your time today and participating in CSGC 2021. Great, thank you for having me.